going back behind the label. Uh, we're continuing with our E.H. Taylor uh, yeah. series. Um, the first part there, we basically just gave an introductory of basically who E.H. Taylor was. Mm -hmm. Colonel, Colonel Taylor, Colonel. he was in, in the service. He yes. had sort of an honorary title. Mm -hmm. um, so where did we get to the last, last time? Uh, so we, we finished uh, with his kind of running of the old Oscar Pepper distillery and having to sell it. Uh, financially got in trouble, you know, had to sell it uh, to LeBron and Graham. So his next kind of foray, which actually he'd been in a little bit longer than when he took over at uh, Old Oscar Pepper, he joined his firm, and they were kind of a wholesale whiskey firm that eventually got into actually distilling. Uh, it was called Gaines Berry and Company. It was formed during the Civil War. Uh, it was W.A. Gaines, uh, Hyman Berry, and Colonel Taylor. He was the company. <laughs> he was the company. Would, yeah. Have you ever found anything behind that of why he wanted to stay the silent partner? Was Gaines, there, was was there, the, Gaines was the money man. So he's, no, he's it may not have been his decision. Yes. <laughs> they might have said, you get to be in the club, but yeah. you can't be on their name. Yeah, Gaines okay. was the money man. And <laughs> Iron Barry, you, you've been to actually Barry Hill Mansion. Yeah. Iron Barry's son built that. There's a beautiful mansion in, uh, in Frankfurt. They, on the, we actually were just at a wedding there not too long ago. Um, but they have events there. It's just, the, especially the ballroom down there. You been down there? Uh, mm -mm. Oh, you haven't been in the ballroom? I haven't been there. Oh, no. Definitely. Uh, it's it's a little bit strange because half of that mansion the state uses for some of their offices in Kentucky State. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So some, you have some kind of Kentucky, yeah, some sort of Kentucky State government offices. And then the other part is for events and weddings and that sort of thing. But it's just, it's exactly what you would think from a you know, a super rich bourbon baron kind of kind of mm -hmm. thing. Big, maybe have some oak and fireplaces. And I'll have to get down there. I definitely down. want to see it. Definitely yeah. want to see it. But that, but that's who we're talking about is uh, Gainsbury and Company. So Gainsbury and Company. Is yeah. Colonel Taylor. Colonel Taylor. And they they uh, reorganize uh, after the Civil War in 1868, and they become Gaines, W. A. Gaines and Company. It's still all Gaines, Barry, Taylor. They had new investors. And uh, like I said, they were a wholesale whiskey company before. And kind of when they formed this, they started into actually buying or building distilleries. And the first one they built, which I have a photo of, was in downtown Frankfurt. I mean, it was, I mean, if you see the picture of it, it's, yeah, it's here it's, and it's the capital. It's in the shadow of the capital. capital. Yeah. Yes, it's called yeah. the Hermitage Distillery. So in 1868, they built the Hermitage. So that's kind of their first. Now was I mean that's really close right after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Did were they was anybody producing whiskey? Any of that group producing whiskey during the during the Civil War? Oh yeah, people were producing. I mean they were selling they were selling both sides. I mean, that's, the, the, the reason I'm asking because I know like the old crow. Mm -hmm. I've read stories that Ulysses S. Grant. We loved it. That was his it's, favorite thing. As a matter of fact, there's a, a funny quote that, or a little uh, anecdote about Lincoln. Uh, the other generals were complaining that Grant was basically staying drunk and, you know, doing nothing but drinking whiskey. And Abraham Lincoln kind of got them all together and said, well, uh, what kind of whiskey does he drink? And they're like, he's drinking the old crow. And he goes, well, if anybody knows where I can get a bunch of barrels of that, because I want to give it to every general in my army. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> he, was, he was staying drunk, but he was winning battles. He, he, so. he was. He was. So, yeah, that's... That was his favorite, but you know the Hermitage is kind of something a lot of people don't know about it. Uh, I've, I've never heard about it. Yeah, they had their brands: the Hermit, Hermitage Bourbon, Hermitage Rye, uh, and you know they 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 pretty much that distillery ran until Prohibition. Uh, now, is there any time with that? I know uh, is it Andrew Jackson's? They they kind of named it after his estate. Okay, so yeah, have time. you been to Hermitage down? I've driven past it in Nashville. Yeah, and I've been to it. It's pretty cool. I've never been. It's in. pretty cool. It's one of our you know. History Geek, like yeah. I said. One of our I, was, I, was I kept seeing the name. I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's some tie in Yeah, I think it's they did the right name it after that. Okay. So, so that, that was, you know, one of the distilleries that they, uh, that they you know, they built. Uh, there was another one that was a very famous brand. By the way, we are, uh, for today's samples are in uh, especially glasses with the Daniels logo on That's it. That's right. This is... Uh, I don't know if you noticed in the last episode, we took some footage out of Jerry's personal helicopter. That's it. Yeah. And uh, he, so he has these on the helicopter as well. So when you're when you're uh, flying around, you get special. All right. <laughs> did you notice that? Well, I said. Did yes, you know? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Don't believe anything when you see when you see some of the stuff. And he puts my name in there. Just don't believe it at all. Oh, by the way, we actually started with, with the old Taylor, mm -hmm. and now we're going to. Can we finish this? Yep. I'll pour you a little smaller 
thing and I think that's, us. I think it's, it, you know, it's a it's a big glass. Yeah. I, well, you want to take that? Yeah. Finish that now. Come on. You want to? You don't want to mingle these. These are both. You know, big glasses. Yeah. You have to do a small. Small pour. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. So this is old crow. Like I said, we'll talk about James C. Crow more, uh, but in the late 1800s, like you said, Grant loved it. Everybody loved it. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Was, Henry Clay was famous at the D.C. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Henry Clay was a big, yeah. a big old uh, crow. crow yeah. Boy. Henry Clay, yeah. you know, famous senator here yeah. in Kentucky. Uh, old crow was <coughs> the top of the line. It was, I mean, James, the standards that James C. Crow used, they were top of the line. So the bourbon that come from it was top of the line. Yeah, I read now, the stories about people, where people were, as a matter of fact, it wasn't even called the Old Crow originally, the, the whiskey wasn't, but because it was, people really liked the flavor and the quality of it, they would say, and they found out that uh, James Crow was basically the distiller, the master distiller, they started calling it, they gave me some of that Old Crow whiskey. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of how the name kind of, kind of grew on. Yeah, so, so it was this year now, is owned by uh, the beans. It's owned by Jim Bean. You know, the warehouses are just yeah, okay. It's so always the, that, the that's the confusing part yeah. because it's like, you know, this was owned by Jim Bean. Yeah. Now it's uh, Buffalo Trace. Trace product. Yeah. This was originally produced here at this mm -hmm. facility we're sitting in today. Yeah. But now uh, Jim Bean owns it. Jim Bean owns it. And yeah. it, so, it, it's where, a, so where's it produced? Barkstown or? No, the, it's there in. Uh, oh, in Frankfurt, okay. You know, it's Jim Bean's product. So, yeah. uh, the thing is, it's it's not what it used to be. It's, it's, as far as quality wise. No, or? quality wise, if you if you go into your liquor store, you'll find this on the bottom. Uh, this one here is, you know, it's it's 80 proof. It's only about three years old. Uh, it's uh, the mash bill 77 percent corn, 13 percent rye, and uh, 10 percent barley. And you can buy this bottle here for about 15 dollars. So it's not what it was. Uh, but the reason we have Old Crow is the next thing that uh, uh, Gaines, when you W.A. Gaines and Company got into, was this name. Uh, the same year that they built the Hermitage in 1868, they also bought the, the brand name, Old Crow, and an old distillery. There's a debate on it. Uh, it wasn't a distillery behind us. But Oscar Pepper built another distillery somewhere on this big farm. Yeah, this, this was a Johnson farm. It was thousands of acres. I think you said it was what, two thousand acres or something. Two thousand so acres. That's a lot of land. So it it was. Be, yeah. now, I would have to imagine it was still somewhere on the mm -hmm. creek because mm -hmm. that's where they had to get the water from, mm -hmm. or at least the spring. So they got this name when Oscar Pepper passed away. They they you know they got it from his estate. And uh, at the time they're building the Hermitage, and that's a lot of money building a distillery from scratch. Right. So I'm pretty sure that they probably ran this distillery. Not here, but the, the, what may have been called the Oak Road Distillery. Uh, ran it for a few years before they built what is behind us. So, so is that when the quality dropped, or it was still no? It was still, it was still good to the, to the 1950s and 60s. Yeah, I saw it. It yeah. was the 53 or something. Yeah, like that. And then when the they 50s. And, yeah. yeah, and uh, so you know they eventually built this distillery here a little bit later, and uh, like I said, that you know James Crow had passed away by then. He passed away in 1856. But his apprentice carried on. He carried on the name of the old crow. So he, he used the same, you know, the same methods and everything that uh, that uh, crow used. So his name was uh, William Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was hired on. Now, now when you say the same methods. Uh, which again we will yeah. get more into like what that is, but essentially it was I know uh, James Crow was kind of credited with not necessarily inventing sour mashing, but perfecting that mm -hmm. and really being uh, kind of scientific in his methods and mm -hmm. very methodical about he was uh, adjusting pHs and mm -hmm. temperatures, and cleanliness, sort of yeah. you know, char barrels, so all that well, stuff. He put all this together. Difference. Yeah, so he continued those, and plus he had the mash bill and all that too. So right. he continued to make an old crow. Uh, so this you know this distillery here. You know, it's been around since 1870s at that time. Beautiful. If you ever come here, I mean, it's gorgeous. Well worth the visit just to see it. Just Everybody to see what runs. The old crow right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah even, yeah. Just the, even a lot of it is in a ruined state right now, but it's actually kind of a uh, really interesting, it's almost like going to a castle that's mm -hmm. ruined. It's very, yeah. very much that sort of feel where you, it's still really cool to see the ruins and the, all the old mechanisms and you know mm -hmm. valves and switches and stuff. So it's pretty, pretty yeah. neat. Business. 
So just just like uh, the Hermitage, it shut down during Prohibition. Uh, right after Prohibition, American Medicinal Spirits who owned a lot of stuff during Prohibition. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. So they now, now were they in with Buffalo Trace at that time? Because I know they made uh, Prohibition era alcohol. No, they would they would have made. It would, I don't think they were owned by them at that time, uh, but they owned a lot of distilleries. They, but this was after Prohibition when they bought this, oh, okay. and eventually that American Medicinal Spirits becomes National Distillers. And there's a photo that we'll show, you know, of the Oak Pro Distillery mm -hmm. with the sign National Distillers, you know, underneath it. So, so it runs, you know, that's 35. It runs under their control until 1985, when Jim Beam bought this property. They actually shut down the distillery at that time. When they bought. They uh, they kept the warehouses over you know over this way to store. So they still own those warehouses today. And a lot of you may know about the one that burnt here recently. Yeah, you can um, they dumped a lot. I don't know how many gallons of whiskey went in the in the Glens Creek and then Kentucky River, but mm -hmm. it was a lot. But uh, if you stepped outside, well, actually there's a window right beside us here. You could probably see actually it. see it from here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so they shut it down. Um, and it pretty much said empty. You can tell, I mean, if you come here, mm -hmm. a lot of it is in ruin, a lot of it's fell down, but you know, the main building's still there, the spring house is gorgeous. Yep. Uh, so that set that way until about 2013. And this gentleman, David Meyer, came in and uh, bought this property. And, and I guess, um, so this property actually was in, in dilapidated state at the same time the old Taylor. Taylor. It was also because it was also in mm -hmm. mothballs. Oh, Taylor was actually shut down before this was. Oh, okay. So yes. So that that's pretty much you know David Meyer buys this, and uh, if you want to know more about that, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. Stay tuned.